Alex, a lawyer and a financial advisor walk into a bar. And then what happens, Dave? Well, the question is, you know, I'm selling things and, you know, consumer laws. Do, do I know what my obligations are when I'm selling? Oh. So you're selling, you're selling goods in Australia. Do you have any warranties? Is there any extra special laws that apply? That's right up my alley, Dave, right up my alley. We love, love a good lawyer up his alley. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. I can certainly answer that question for you. And I think it's something that's come up a bit in litigation at the moment. There's a case before the courts where JB Hi-Fi have been sued for selling what they call junk warranties. They're selling a warranty yep. for a product. You know, they say, okay, we'll fix it if it breaks in three years. But probably the consumer law gives you a... A guarantee that they have to fix it in, if it breaks in three years anyway. So they're selling you something you've already got. So I uh, always thought they were pretty dodgy. I was always a bit surprised when. Yeah, uh, it was. Ama- I mean, amazed clearly how much they push that when you're I- in the um, stores. Yeah, and yeah. I was even when you stand there sometimes and you watch how many people buy them, you go, yeah. "Wow, yeah. really?" Yeah, I mean, it's not just JB. It's the good guys. It's the I don't know. They if I all do it. But they all they all sell you a warranty, yeah. And I think a lot of that is is on the back of people don't really understand what they think. If they buy a good good, take it home and it breaks, then they're stuffed. And yep. that's not the case. If you buy buy it, buy something and then take it home and it breaks, it doesn't work. Then you're very likely you've got a claim against the supplier or the manufacturer. That's the other thing they do. They come when you take it back to the store. They say, oh no, nah, the manufacturer's got that's the manufacturer's problem. Off you go, and you go, oh okay. And off you go. But if you took bought it from someone, you've got to claim against them. You can claim against the manufacturer as well, but you can claim against the person who sold it to you. So, so then, what's the current rules if now there is yep. that question mark over the? So, was it basically purchasing an extended warranty? Yeah, is, is the issue that's been occurring. So, if yep. I'm if I'm a retailer, yep. selling any product really, yep. there is a implied warranty within the existing consumer laws. Right, yeah. So, so any transaction in Australia that, that happens between pretty much anyone yep. um, uh, is protected by consumer law, provided it's either under $100,000 or it's for what they call personal household domestic use type things. It's basically everything. If you're selling something that's over a hundred grand, say you're selling a, a, a truck chassis, which is going to be repurposed and sold as a truck and it's worth 500 grand. That's yep. not a consumer transaction, so that's not covered, right? But you know, yeah, it might be in some people's worlds. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, if it's being repurposed and resupplied, that's outside. Yep. It's over hundred grand. So there's various requirements. I won't go through them in too much detail, but most transactions in Australia are going to fall within the yeah, yeah, yeah. Law, but yeah. Most of them are protected, so that's the first thing. And then if they are, if they fall within that definition, then there's a whole bunch of warranties which just apply. It doesn't matter what the contract says. Doesn't matter what the returns. Uh, you, know, off, you might have an, we, no returns or only store credit sign or you might say that on your, on your terms and conditions. None of that matters. The, these warranties apply. And they are um, that the goods have to be of an acceptable quality, mm-hmm. that they have to be fit for the purpose for which they are intended, that they have to match their description. So if you have a description on the box or something or, you know, you have a sample, it has to match, has to actually be like it says on the box. Um, and then that you have to be able to repair, um, uh, provide spare parts for it and, and that sort of stuff. So, so is, that, uh, is that new new products only or used no, products as well? as well? So that's yeah, yeah. a good question. So they, they do interpret these things differently in different contexts. So if, you, mm. if you're buying like a, a secondhand toaster for 20 bucks, that's going to have a different warranty effectively that applies than if you're buying, say, a, um, a, a dishwasher or, or, or you know, a, a washing machine which might, be two thousand bucks, you know what I mean? Yep, and yep. you expect that to last, I don't know, five, ten years, whereas you might only expect the toast to last a year or two. Yep. So that, yep. it, the, the the law does is kind of dependent on the context, um, but it, it applies to secondhand goods as well. Um, the only thing I think I think it doesn't apply to private sellers. So I think if you're selling on Facebook, um, then you're not covered. But I think if you're buying something on Facebook that's sort of secondhand at someone's house, you probably not expecting to be coming. Yeah, right. Because right. well, well, that'd be pretty hard to track that down, wouldn't it? Yeah, so, well, well, and, and that's the other side of it. It's all very well to have a great claim, but if someone just disappears into the night, then it's going to be pretty hard to chase them or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think business owners need to be aware of what, um, if they're selling uh, goods or services, and what what applies, what they have to provide to their customers and what they don't. And if they're going to sell an extended warranty or some other service, then, you know, what that offers beyond what's required anyway, you know. Yeah, right. So, okay. uh, so, that's so I just, on. yeah, just want to sort of remind people the discussion we're having today is looking at sort of consumer laws and do you know yeah. your obligations? Yeah. Um, just an interesting kind of space. Yeah. So, so why is it really, I mean, 
from my understanding, these laws have been in place for, you know, really quite a really long period of time. Right. Yeah. And yeah. how has it only just come about? Because it seems yeah. that you go to any store when you're purchasing, it's probably more so electronic gear, I would yeah. think, in a lot of areas, yeah. that they but constantly they offer you the, this extended warranty. And I always thought it was strange that you would take yeah. it out. I'm not really sure why it's taken so long to lead to a class action. I guess it is a bit of a grey area, so it does depend. You know, a three-year warranty for certain types of goods might be very helpful, whereas yep. for other types, not so helpful. So it becomes this kind of difficult to, to gauge and difficult to bring a case. Um, and uh, and they're low-value transactions in, in the scheme of things. So often if you're, you know, you're talking about a $300 extended warranty or whatever, no one's going to sue over that. And it really takes someone to, to, to have the wherewithal to bring a class action and a law firm to support it and all that for it to, to hit the media. But certainly the consumer law is not new. It's been around for a long time. It's gradually getting tougher. Uh, so in my career, you know, over the 20 years I've been working in consumer law, um, the, the law is and more. Yeah, I'm, I'm just <laughs> look really good. You, know? <laughs> you don't look it. Yeah, you must have been a, a sort of a child law student. You know, when, I, uh, when I, oh, it's just a genius. <laughs> when I started with the, uh, the, the, the Trade Practices Act, that's what I, the 1974 Trade Practices Act is what I studied, and then they that got replaced by the Australian Consumer Law, um, which is much more modern, but it's basically the same stuff. The, the really the really interesting thing I, I reckon is is acceptable quality. What does acceptable quality mean? Yeah, isn't that open to interpretation? Yeah, very open. Yeah, and it, it's it's been interpreted to mean safe, durable, um, and free from defects. But then what those three things mean is really dependent on the context. It really depends on the the, the character of the item. But you sort of know if you you know if you buy a I don't know a candlestick that might have a certain life, whereas if you buy a a uh, you know a, a refrigerator that'll have a different life you know that, that and I think yeah, people know yeah, yeah. that believe that a, a fridge might last you ten twenty years yep. um, but you don't expect it to last fifty years and you don't expect it to last one year you know so you know at least in the range that it should sort of last and uh, and defects they're, they're sort of the, the things that you yeah, you know it if you see it you know yeah, um, yeah. That's where the can, can then can can then a um you know can um manufacturer or or probably yep. also a retailer yeah can they within their contract of sale um yep. exclude no yeah good so question components you know no. that sort of say well our our you know agreement says that yes. we yeah we cover it to whatever extent or somehow they've had a very cle clever lawyer draft yep. something for yep. them that enables them to sort of dance around this issue yeah so the, the warranties are implied by law, so they just they apply no matter what the contract yeah, right. says. In fact, you can't you can't exclude them in any effort to do that would be void. The key thing if you're a business owner that you want to do, especially if you're a retailer, is you want to make sure that any returns you um, uh, have to take from a customer that you're able to that flow that through to the to the supplier. manufacturer. Often the, yeah, the, right. the a relationship between the supplier, the manufacturer, and the retailer might be a commercial arrangement, which is not covered by consumer law because you're resupplying, right? So you're not a an Australian consumer law person. Um, so you're not a consumer within that definition, so you're not protected in the same mm -hmm. way. If you buy, you know, 10,000 uh, uh, dishwashers, actually you would be if you're buying dishwashers, but anyway, you want to make sure the, um, the, the, the arrangement between the um, supplier, the manufacturer and the retailer can um, allow you to basically push on your costs or repair costs or whatever to the manufacturer. Yeah, right. Uh, you know, so just make sure the contracts are drafted properly, so that if you have to take something back and, and cop a loss on it, that you're not out of pocket. So is it really that it's sort of it's cascades back to the original yeah. source? Yeah, it you should know, do. The, sort of, you yeah. know, the manufacturer needs to go through its own QA um, exactly process yeah. that then says, well, when it's left the factory, it was of, of merchantable quality, and we're all very happy with that. Then goes, right. but at what point does it then become? Because that becomes really hard. So say the product is delivered from the manufacturer to the retailer. Yep. So it goes into their distribution centre and then gets dispersed out to multiple stores. Yep. There's a huge amount of time of multiple people touching that particular yep. product yep. that Someone could or not, you know, yep. that could be in a position like, yeah, but how do I know as the manufacturer that your guys in the factory didn't drop it? Or Yeah, yeah, totally. Especially you're talking about, yeah, some, some physical damage or then you sell it and then, the, then how do you know the, the customer didn't drop it, right? Yeah, like how, how do they sort of address... Those yeah. sorts of issues yeah. within the consumer laws, because they'll say, "Oh no, no, I know." For instance, when we I purchased a, a, a TV, you know, twelve months ago, and the guy at JB basically said, "I'm giving it to you in this box. Yeah. If you get it home, 
and because there should be enough protection within the packaging around it, yeah. and, and you put some pressure on the screen and it's cracked. That, that's you. I'm like, yeah, hey, yeah. How do I know that? How do I know? But what yeah. they did, they opened up the box, yeah, lifted it out, yeah, yeah and showed up. us and said, "Can you see any, you know, um, yeah. defects on here yeah. at the moment?" Yeah. And basically, they get you to sign that off. I mean, is that how yeah. some of them are having to get around that sort of stuff? Yeah, I mean, that's pretty pretty extreme. Certainly, there is uh, processes between manufacturers and you know and 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 uh, retailers, and then between retailers and the customer where you inspect and where you sign off. You know, you accept delivery and all that mm. sort of stuff. But often that's pretty loose. I know when I've accepted delivery of various things, I've barely looked at it. And if it was there was something wrong with it, I'd still expect a refund. Um, and it depends on the nature. Like they might, if it was an internal thing, you couldn't have done that, right, unless it's alleged that you opened it up and did it. So it does depend on the kind of damage you're dealing with. Um, but I guess I guess you just got to rely on inspections along the way and on the documents at the time. And certainly we do deal with lots yeah. of stuff like that, you know, who caused the damage and at what point. And sometimes multiple people were involved in in some way, you know. So they didn't pack the, the package right in the back of the truck. And then because it wasn't packed right and the, the truck driver also bumped into something, so the, the combination of the poor packaging plus the truck driver's mistake. You yeah. know. Well, as we close out our conversation today, I would like to thank Alex from Taurus Legal Management. He can be contacted via LinkedIn at Alex Martin or via the website tauruslawyers.com.au. Thanks, Dave. And I'd like to thank David Murdoch, the wealth activist from Paxton Bridge. You can contact him at David Murdoch um, on LinkedIn or at www.paxtonbridge.com. Excellent. Thank you, Alex. Enjoy. Good talking. And we'll chat again soon. See you next time.